Hi everyone, I'm back and today I'm going to be using a new tool called Pentest.ws to go after the DevOps machine. Pentest.ws is a note-taking tool that I've started using for my work on OSCP because I like how it lets me track notes for multiple hosts going back and forth pretty easily as well as tracking what I've compromised and what I haven't. It's pretty interesting in that it will show you a lot of information and uploads directly from an nmapped XML output. So if I go to launch, this is where we'll be using today. We'll be using the YouTube hacks engagement that I've created, and we're gonna be working on the DevOps machine, which is a media machine on Hack the Box. I'm also using the new Hack the Box UI, which is pretty interesting. I like it so far. It's got the active machine that you're using at the very top, which is something that I really appreciate. It's a lot easier to find that now. So why don't we get started, Mo? Uh, since I don't have a script for a new output yet, I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do nmap-st-a, so standard TCP scan with all flags, output of xml, devoops.xml. So what it changed there is that I have to actually go in and label my xml file and then feed it. Now I've already output an xml file, so I'm going to just upload that by importing this. You know, once we import it, you'll see that now on the left, we have the host machine, we have the ports, and if we click into it, we can take notes, keep track of credentials, we can look at a scratch pack for code, set up a report. There's a whole lot of useful tools out of this. So what we'll do is save this for notes instead of going back into Nano like I had been before. And what you'll see with our nmap results this time around is that we have port 22 and 5000 open. 5000 appears to be some level of HTTP. 22, not something that we can really use without any credentials. So why don't we go back to colon 5000. So we see a website that's under construction. This is feed.python, which will become the MVP for blog feeder application to do is replace this with a proper feed from dev solidify. This is a picture, nothing we can really see there. And if we view the page source, it's just a poorly formatted file, nothing that we can really get out of that. So why don't we go straight into this and go go buster, directory scrape. Make sure we designate it at port 5000. change it to 40 threads, HTML, TXT, and PHP files. And we'll see what we can find. And you can see it's already starting to pipe out results. So why don't we take these two, put them over here into my notes. And what I like more about this note style taking is that previously I'd have all this at the top of my note files. Now it's down here in a neat section and I can focus on putting the important information in this section over here. So let's go take a look at feed and upload. If you see feed, it's just a picture. And upload takes us to a site where we can upload some level of file. Doesn't look like there's anything in the source, but what we see here is we can browse to upload a specific file, which looks to be that it's looking for an XML file. So what I've done here, I'm going to stop this. If you look, I've created test.xml, test.jpg, text, or test.php. And really, each of those is just to test the capabilities of what I can and can't upload. And as I go through this, you'll see PHP, JPEG, and even test.xml don't quite work. XML comes the closest by giving an internal error, and that's likely because I didn't have it properly formatted as an XML file, and it didn't contain these elements. So what I think now is that I need to do some kind of level of XML exploitation, sort of similar to a PHP remote command injection. So why don't I go to Google and search for XML command injection, maybe? And we see that XML eternal entity processing. 
is a way to kind of go in and read files through XML. So if I go, I've already created this file called README, I'm gonna bring it up. You can see that accessing the local resource is a matter of just creating an XML file, designating the file over here, and making sure though that we have the matching elements that are proper here. So what I did was I added blank offer, blank subjects, blank content, and I'm reading the Etsy password file. So now why don't I go in and try uploading that. And if you look at this, now we have an Etsy password file. Really all this does is it gives us a username. Now we know who we're looking for. We, we know we're looking for Rusa. So I've added Rusa. Now I know she's here. I don't have a password. I don't have a service. And I don't really have much else to go off. I could spend some time kind of enumerating if I had the right file names, but I don't. What I do know is that Rusa exists. I know that if we look, her file path is home rusa deploy source. And we know we have SSH open. So what I think there is that we need to look at SSH and how we can get in there. And I'm gonna take a couple educated guesses here. And you'll have these opportunities to make these kind of guesses as well. But really this is from experience where we know that the SSH RSID key or RSA keys are in home rusa. We're gonna go dot SSH because it's a hidden directory and we're gonna go for id RSA. So what I'm getting here is the key that I can use to log into Rusa remotely. And if I go back and I try browsing to that again, I've pulled her RSA key. So I'm going to go nano rusa. Now you'll notice here it's really crappily formatted. So what you have to do to get this to be right is just kind of Nah, this is just what I like to do. Just move it over. And it doesn't look like it's an encrypted key, so that's nice. If it was an encrypted key, we'd have some level of uh, encryption declared at the top, so I should be able to just use this once I modify it, because in order to use an RSA key with the SSH command, you have to do a char mod 400. the end so what I'm gonna do is just grab that I apologize for bad noise I'm gonna char mod 400 Rusa SSH you do the I flag and look at that I'm in so let's do an LS Here's our user file. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to bring it over. So now, what do we do? We're in. We don't know quite what we can and can't do. I can't quite sudo l because I don't have her password, so I'm a little limited in that respect. But what you can see is that I can actually read her bash history. So why don't we do this one? Cat dot bash history. You can see quite a lot of commits for GitHub. So let's just scroll to the top and develop a time frame. She's generating keys. She's editing her host files. Doing some work with Git, creating that. It looks like it's the blog feed file. 
she's made another key file in a directory called integration off credentials key. She's moved here. She committed it to the enterprise backend and spelled enterprise wrong. Now this is interesting. You can see that she reverted the accidental commit with a proper key. So she pushed a key with git that shouldn't have been pushed. So there's a tool called git log that will help us find the ID for that. So I'm going to tail the last 20 lines, we'll say. But I forgot to do my dash n. I'm, in, I'm not in the right repository. So this is the kind of thing that'll happen. You'll forget what's going on. Uh, you're not in the proper place. So I got to go to her work directory where blog feed is. Now I should be able to git log. Now you can see here is the commit where she reverted that back because of a proper key. So now I should be able to get, and if you want to see all the commands right here, just take a look, you can double tab. But the one that really gets me right here is revert, which you'll then feed that ID. And this is likely not working because I already did this once. So what will happen is you'll see a nano file appear where you can just say, yes, I understand this is happening. So now if I go to source, or rather resources, integration, there's the off, off credentials. If I cat that, I'm going to copy that now. Chamad 400. And now I have another set of potential SSH keys. So at this point, I'm going to shoot for the stars. Let's say root. And I'm in. There's your root flag. So this one was more finding a git project, looking at bash history. The bash history is a big lesson to take away from this. If you can see what they've done, you can picture an idea of what's going on on the machine and then use that to your advantage. From there, it's just a matter of maybe Googling some git commands to figure out what you can and can't do. But really, when you have those IDs, uh, if she reverted once, you can probably revert back. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and have a good day.